I recently made a Mac Studio review and then I compared this device to my M1 Pro MacBook Pro and my M1 MacBook Air. And I was using a Premiere Pro 8 minute 4K sequence um, that was actually my A7 IV versus A7 III video on this channel already. And that video had a lot of different um, cameras and frame rates and titles and graphics and all kinds of stuff. So it was a very interesting benchmark to see how these different machines handled that same exact sequence. And after I made that video, I realized there's one machine that I haven't compared that to yet. And that is my custom built PC I made in 2019 for $3,000. It's been my workhorse and I worked at home for a long time and this was the machine that I used. It's a very fast machine, it can handle a lot, but how does it compare to the M1 chips? My custom built PC is using an Intel uh, CPU. I'll put all the specs of my custom PC here and all of the M1 base model specs here. Whenever you're working with a PC, most of the time, you can purchase a couple components and upgrade components as you need to. If you need more hard drive space, you can just open the panel and add another hard drive. If you need more RAM, you can just upgrade the RAM or the graphics card or the CPU and motherboard. Whenever you're buying an Apple device, everything is so tightly bound to this device that you can't buy the M2 chip if that ever comes out and just take out the M1 Max and put the M2 in. It doesn't work like that in Mac Apple world. That is frustrating, but it's only frustrating when you go to buy the machine because after you start using it, you really see the benefits of everything being so tightly integrated. The hardware and software are all the same on Mac Studios, so you can really make software really take advantage of all of the advantages for the chip. When it comes to Windows, there are a million different graphics cards and CPUs and RAM, motherboards, all kinds of stuff. So it's hard to optimize software when there's so much variety when it comes to the hardware. With all that aside though, the three things we're testing today with these two machines is export time, open time, and the general experience when it comes to editing and moving the playhead around. To me, opening and the export times are helpful, but the best metric to guide from is the experience of actually editing and scrubbing through the playhead. Once you start adding things and bogging the machine down, if it can still edit easily, that's a good machine that I would wanna use. A quick refresher on the Mac Studio times. To open the project and link all of the assets, it took about 30 seconds. The export time of our eight minute sequence was two minutes and 38 seconds, which was the best export times I've ever seen with an eight minute sequence of this caliber. And a quick review of scrubbing through the timeline with the Mac Studio. I was able to have full quality 4K A7S III footage, and it was able to play back Fast forward once and twice, but the twice had a little bit of frame drop and then it would catch up, but it was usable. That was all full quality. And when we were rewinding, for some reason, that's the most taxing on systems for some reason, but I was able to rewind times one and it was able to do that with full quality. But when I did rewind times two, it kind of just fell apart. Bumping the quality down to one half let me skip backwards times two, but after a while it did lag and it really wasn't usable after a while. This is a common problem and it's kind of a good benchmark for systems when it comes to rewinding footage. If you can fast forward times two, that's a good thing, but rewinding is really taxing on systems for some reason. So the Mac Studio did really well with Premiere Pro. This is a $2,000 base level machine. So let's go over the specs for the custom PC now. Opening the file and linking all of the assets took 23 seconds on the PC. This is pretty impressive considering the 30 second time of the highly optimized um, all of the Macs really. Strangely enough, the MacBook Air did this in 27 seconds. I made sure to clear all caches and make sure there was nothing happening that would give any computer an advantage over the other. And repeatedly, the MacBook Air was able to open and link all of the assets three seconds faster than the Mac Studio and the bigger MacBook Pro. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but 
the PC was able to do it in 23 seconds. The export time for our 8 minute sequence was 4 minutes and 10 seconds on the custom PC. My MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Pro did it in 4 minutes and 9 seconds, so that's pretty comparable. When the custom PC was playing back in the timeline though, this is where things got a little bit interesting. The full quality was able to play through no problem, and I was able to fast forward times one, and after about one minute it would start to lag a little bit and catch up. Um, I probably wouldn't be fast forwarding through a minute of footage, but uh, it was a good test to see that. Dropping the quality down to one half, I was able to fast forward times one and two for pretty much as long as I needed to. But when it came to rewinding, I tried it at full quality, one half, one quarter, and one eighth, and I could not rewind times one on my custom PC. It would just immediately start being unusable. It wouldn't play back at all. It wouldn't play back for five seconds in normal backward speed. So it was really interesting that I couldn't reverse in Premiere Pro with any 4K footage. I've been able to do this with 1080p footage, but with 4K, it's just too demanding on either the CPU or the GPU or something, and it just can't rewind backwards. It is nice that I can rewind on the Max, but to get around this pretty simple over the years, I've just manually moved the playhead back and then play from that point forward. It's not really a huge deal, but it is something to note. While both these can play back our A7S III footage, it just feels like this comparison comes down to a Mac versus PC battle at the end of the day. Do you want to have a really tightly unified system that you buy once and just take home, put on your desk, plug it in, and you're good to go? but you'll never have the ability to upgrade anything in the future. Yeah, you can add some external storage or something like that, but really when it comes to upgrading the CPU or anything like that internally, you're not able to do that. If you want a system that you can buy and slowly upgrade over time as you see fit, building a PC is really an invaluable experience and I have had a really great time doing it. And since I've built this one, I've helped a couple of other friends build their own PCs. And it's nice to hear whenever a new CPU comes out, it's like, well, do I just upgrade these two parts and have a pretty much brand new computer? Whenever there's a new Mac computer out, I see tons of Facebook marketplace posts and Craigslist and eBay posts saying, hey, I'm selling my one generation old Mac so I can buy the new latest and greatest Mac. I understand that the tightly integrated software and hardware allows for really great optimizations, great battery life and all kinds of great benefits, but there is kind of that underlying question. Do you want to just buy it once and then buy the new generation when it comes out? Or do you want to buy a PC and upgrade the parts as you see fit? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't checked out my Mac Studio review, check that out, I'll leave a link to that here. And if you haven't seen that video of me building my custom PC, I'll leave that link here as well. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in those videos.